may be playing football and the crowd is yelling, kill the referee. But no matter what the score when the clock strikes four, everything stops for tea. Welcome to Spill the Tea, the show for British expats everywhere around the world and for everyone who loves everything British. I'm Phil Susan. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Phil. I'm Sam. And on today's show, let me tell you what we're up to. We've got Phil Susan as our guest co-host. We've got a BFF with Eve Dawes. We've got the, the COVID kitchen and other bits and pieces. We're going to have a really, really fun show. Whack the mic already, because it's got to keep the tradition of whacking the mic every single week. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Sam. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. We're, we're, we're doing a hazing on you today, aren't That's we? That's right, exactly. It's yes. a trial by fire when you become a guest host on this show, because we forget to tell the stuff that you've got to do. And <laughs> Just jumping in at the deep end, you yeah, know. Yeah, you always feel better at the end of it, though. You're like, I made it, <laughs> I made it. We've got Ian. Is uh, he's he's in the he's in the power chair. Ian oh. is in the power chair. Yeah, you're, you see, you come to me always this early, and I'm still trying to figure this oh, stuff out. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. No, no. <laughs> You're Getting fine. in trouble. You're fine. I'm Getting just, in um, trouble. You know, there's there's a lot of moving parts back here. There, there are. Yeah, you're like an octopus. I know exactly over there. But um, how are you doing, Ian? I'm good. I'm good. So we've got we've got a, a good show today. We've got lots of stuff going on. Tons. Um, and the great thing is, I get to do none of it. I know. That's okay. What's it like having your hands on the controls over there, Captain Kirk? <laughs> well. You know, it's it is a good sense of power. I do like it. You know, I like that chair too. But yeah. I'm, I'm I'm all right with this one for a minute. You're looking good. good over there, Ian. Huh? You're looking good over there. Well, thank you, ma'am. Have you got your special light on? <laughs> I have got my special light. <laughs> you do look really healthy, though. I have to say. Hey. And, and you know, for the first time, I think is this the first time I've wore a hat on the show. Even no. though I'm hat obsessed. No, I think you've I think you've worn one before. Do you let me tell you something? I've bought extremely expensive hats. Usually it's like a treat, you know, a birthday, Christmas kind of thing. I've got a small head. I mean, I don't know who they're making these hats for. I mean, like big heads. Mm -hmm. It's always a bit difficult to get a hat that fits. Now, this hat I get from Target of all places. And they've done something genius if you wear hats. There's, a, there's two pieces of elastic inside with Velcro. And you can adjust it. To, is that not genius? It is genius. I'm just so impressed. And yet I've spent a lot of money on other hats and no. You That's like the uh, the 1980s sunshade <laughs> visor thing that people yes. used to put on. It had Velcro around the back. Yes. Remember that? You can adjust that to fit. You know what? You could wear that the other way around, couldn't you, as a shield for Corona? You could. You'd it would just look... shield people from your, uh, from <laughs> one's own ugliness. You know? so, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So how are you doing this morning, Phil? We had a nice chat yesterday, yes, didn't we? Did. we? We did. We had a really nice chat. What Did you listen to music on the way in, in you know, to the show today? Did no, you... I actually talked to a very good friend of mine who I I haven't spoken to him in a little while and it's his uh, birthday tomorrow. He's in England, actually. Nice. He's in uh, Peace Haven. Nice. Gentleman by the name of Phil Carlo, who uh, is a dear friend of mine. And um, he uh, he used to be Led Zeppelin's tour manager after Richard Cole. Really? And we worked together went many years ago oh. when I was on Swan Song. And we became very good friends. In fact, his daughter's my goddaughter. So oh. after all these years, you know, we're still in touch. It's nice to have friends like that and be able to... Still stay in touch despite the the distance, the distance all exactly. the time that that you get to see each other. You know, it's it, yeah, all the time difference. All the time. Di oh, <laughs> why can't people remember that time difference? Like my family, I've been here twenty five years. Still, yeah. I'll get a call in the middle of the night, frightening me to death, just because they've forgotten. You know, yeah. But <laughs> it happens a lot. It's funny you're talking about Led Zeppelin. I think we need to throw, throw up this meme. This is so weird. Hmm. Throw up that meme, Ian. Uh, th you know which one it is. No. <laughs> oh, it's the one with the lady and the guy. Oh, this one? Well, Let's have a the, look. the Amazon one? No, no, that's a good one. The one that's wearing a blue boiler suit. Oh, there you go. I got you. Oh, is he saying about her? I'm not fooling. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. How weird that you mentioned uh, Led Zeppelin. Well, I was listening. I was very rock and roll this morning. I listened to some Tom Jones. Tom Jones? Yeah. Very good. It's not yeah. unusual to, to do that, is it? Take my lips and my arms. All that stuff, yeah. Mm. I mean, it's, it's the kind of music that hypes you up for a show. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was very cold coming in as well. You could have listened to Billy Idol's Nice Day for a Light Sweater, yeah. <laughs> yes, totally. Nice Day for a 
cardigan. <laughs> I bet people do sing those lyrics. The I mean, memes. I'm at the point now where I, a lot of the Michael Jackson lyrics, <laughs> I don't know what they are, and I'm still singing weird things, but I don't want to know now. Yeah. It would ruin <laughs> decades of singing the wrong lyrics. My younger sister, there's a, the Queen song, she sings uh, Rhapsody. Rhapsody? Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. She sings Devil for a Sideboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't learn what the original lyrics are. There was a com- there's a comedian that does that, that, that pulled all the, 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 the oh. m- miss, whatever it is. Misheard uh, lyrics. Misheard lyrics. Yeah, I love it. I mean, yeah. uh, in fact, you know what? Let's see who's online with this right now. And let's see who, uh, li- who's who got some misheard lyrics, what they sing. But yeah, I don't want to know now. We've got Mike with us. Let's have a look. We've got Jenny. Uh, we got, y- we got my mum. Your mum's here. Your mum's there. Mike's my mum's here. On. Um, uh, Tim, Tim Roberts. What's up, Phil? Do you know Tim? Tim Roberts. Hello, Tim. Yeah. So he's saying he's saying hi this morning. <gasps> um, and my mum again. We've got Faye here. Faye, where Craig, else in Yorkshire are you from? And I know you live here in Vegas. Uh, who else have we got? Craig, Craig Randall says, nice hat. Thank you. I do uh, love a hat. Kevin Flick uh, says, morning peeps. Now, Kevin used to be in a band as well. He was a musician. He was a lead guitarist. I do know that. What's the name of the band? Oh, I just put you on the spot. I, no, I don't, but Kevin's going to tell Kevin, us what the name, of the, what the the name of the band was. <laughs> and it, was it Kevin's dad that per- played? Yeah, Kevin's dad, uh, his name was Vic Flick. He was part of the John Barry Seven, and he is the guy who played the James Bond riff. Oh, really? He is He is that person. Yeah. Wow. Yes, he is. Uh, oh, Mick's right. Yes, I did wear. I wore a fascinator on the anniversary show. That's right. We've got uh, Gary with us. Becky from Yorkshire. Uh, what is she? Oh, Peter Kay. She says does a lot on misheard lyrics. Do you know Peter Kay, the comedian? I think that might be who, who, who it, it was. Is. Yeah. Oh, oh it is because he's saying staple the vicar. <laughs> staple the vicar. <laughs> Just let me staple the vicar. Right, okay. <laughs> I thought it was. Hilarious. I think I actually posted that on the um, on the page. Um, a oh, week did or so I, I did. I, I think it was was it New Year's Day or something. I think I posted that that actual clip. Oh, so. that is funny. Who else have we got? We've got Dawn. We've got Julia. My daughter would sing "Dirty Jeans, Done Dirty." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's so funny. Your face. Oh, you're from Wakefield. I'm from Sheffield. We need to meet each other since we're kind yeah, of in just the like area. Yeah, Arctic monkeys. Yeah, I love me Arctic monkeys. Oh, I'm I mean, sure when you I do. try and get Mick Burns, by the way, says anniversary show. You wore a hat. I wore a fascinator. Oh, it wasn't. Did I? Did I miss that? Yeah. You said that already, didn't Actually, you? Actually, it was more of a hat fascinator. You know what? Arctic monkeys. I love them. Hmm. A lot of the what they they write about is very relevant to Sheffield, of course, but. Uh, when I've actually sent songs to my American friends, they have, they have, I don't understand anything that they're singing. Yeah. And it's a real shame. Because yeah. I think it's so funny. I love the one they sings, you're being a Mardi bum. Yeah. You've, been, <laughs> <laughs> you've got the face on. <laughs> I just love it. Who so, else have we got? Um, I don't know who else we got. But I was going to say, yeah. Phil, you're from, you were telling me you're Maida Vale. You're from Maida Vale in London, right? Yeah, I was born in Maida Vale. Now, what is it that, um, that is so special about Maida Vale that you were sharing with me? Oh, Maida Vale is probably the heart of where the whole punk movement started in oh. about 1974 or 75 or something around then, maybe 76 even. But uh, bands like Kilburn and the High Roads, London SS, Chelsea, all those bands, and eventually Generation X. So a real musical That's, yeah. area. And at that time I was, you know, in my sort of 15, 16s, which oh. was that kind of yeah. formative musical era. Yeah. But I was uh, caught between a literally a rock and a hard place because I was kind of a hard rock fan. And then all of a sudden the music of my generation was this new punk thing. And so I was kind of pulled this way and that yeah. a little bit. And for a you long said, time, you just said my generation. I just, so I know. You see, had to pick you up on that. Baby. Yeah, I, I try to insert <laughs> as many puns as possible. <laughs> it's true. Now, so, but the thing is, the, the thing that I noticed, though, interestingly, this morning, because yes. it wasn't really a good kind of item by itself, but um, Danny Boyle, the director, is about yeah. to direct a uh, six-part miniseries on the Sex Pistols. Oh, really? Um, that, but that's going to be fabulous. Yeah, it's it's based upon the. Uh, the memoirs of the guitarist. What was his name? Steve Jones. Steve Jones. So it's it's based upon his memoirs, and and Danny Boyle's going to film it, and it's going to oh. have it's got it's got some people playing the roles in it. So it should be interesting. Brilliant. Hey, yeah. by the way, Susan said that she's got a little bit of trivia here. Misheard lyrics are called Mondegreens. 
Mondegreens. Mondegreens. I'm glad somebody came up with that. I'm glad. <laughs> Good morning, Claire. Out. Thank you very much. Uh, me and Claire are going to have a little coffee after the show. <laughs> Who else have we got? Kate from Vancouver, originally from Lancashire. Lancashire last. We've got Gina. Uh, who else have we got? Oh, Mike said he lost his feed for a while. Uh, Jeremy Moss. Uh, Peter, get there. Yeah, we're good. Good morning, oh. everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, what was I going to say about? Oh, Corona. You want a beer? <laughs> Everything's related to the Corona, isn't it? These <laughs> days, it really is. But um, a lot of people were saying they were just just really stressed, you know, with all these. Yes. No restrictions, extended restrictions, da 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 da. So I want to offer you some tips that will help you relax. Is this for the 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 new wave? The what's I think it's going to well, be called we, the Modelo virus next. Oh, it's got a name now. No, Another I'm name. Just gonna... <laughs> Mom. <laughs> so uh, your body your body operates in in either parasympathetic or sympathetic mode. Now, sympathetic mode mm. is not what you think it is. Sympathetic mode is stressed. It's fight or flight, which a lot of people are really in that mode. Uh, People are not heavily in parasympathetic mode, which is rest, digest, relax. But they don't quite know how to get there. Um, And there's some very simple things you can do because you need to stimulate what they call your vagus nerve. Not vagus as in Las Vegas or getting on my Las Vegas nerve. Oh, the nerve of it. (laughs) The nerve of it. Vegas as in G-U-S at the end. And it runs through every major organ of your body. I see. From your brain. So here are some simple things. Really simple. And they work. They absolutely work. One of them is humming. If you're stressed, it's a little bit like when people go, um, but like humming, singing actually stimulates the vagus nerve. I see. Another one is put your face in cold water for 30 seconds. Just, Should you breathe? <laughs> try not to. Okay. <laughs> Just hold your breath. 30 <laughs> seconds or 30 seconds at the end of your shower, turn it on cold. It's hard to do. It might take, I'm, I'm telling you, you have to build up to it. 10 it's not seconds. Happen. Is like, but let me tell you something. You'll feel so invigorated and it gets you in that parasympathetic mode. Ah, so tight. deep breathing, uh, cold water, cold showers, humming, and in yoga. Do you do yoga? No. Are you a yoga guy? No. No. You know the plow where you lay on your back and you f- take your legs over? That stimulates the vagus nerve as well. I see. I think everybody I mean, I, should try it. I've had hard it. enough time trying to get out of the shower when it's cold out. I mean, maybe <laughs> that gets the same effect. It but... will do. Yeah, if you're actually cold and it takes you into parasympathetic mode, which is where we all need to be. And when you think about this, if you're stressed when you eat... Mm. People tend to go, oh, stomach's really upset. I don't feel good. And it, stress will affect everything. So there's my tips for today. Yeah, and I, I hum a lot. I do the cold shower thing. It's do horrendous. you hum in the shower? Well, I think if I hum, do the plow. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't the whole point that you you, you don't hum at all after the shower? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. You could kind of double up on it. You could hum in the shower. Although the whole thing reminds me of the, uh, the story of the masochist who liked nothing better than to take an ice cold shower first thing in the morning. So he used to have a hot bath. You have to think about that one, don't you? It's <laughs> it's too early, Phil. Oh, I mean, for my brain to work, so, yeah. It, it's only ten a.m. here. Come it's on. happy hour somewhere in the world. I've got to think about that. I like to, I like to think about your other one. Okay, yeah, you did have. But to think I did about get one. it. It yeah. was a, a friend of ours, a geeky guy, comedian. You may have seen him on oh. America's Got Talent, and he calls it, you know, uh, uh, he calls them joke bombs, where he he, he pulls the pin, he throws throws the, the hand grenade, yeah, <laughs> and then. Eventually, it explodes and you get it. Yeah. You know, and he's very, very talented. Hey, comedian. you guys hungry? Because we got Alex here. Who's... Hey, oh. Alex, come you, on you... in. Come on in. So I just Alex. had a revelation about Alec. Alex. Alex. Well, it's okay. We'll we'll add the sibilances afterwards. <laughs> yeah, as a we can custom. edit them in. <laughs> there he is. Is that like Coming a voiceover in. talent? You have the sib- sibilance talent that <laughs> comes in and just adds the. At the end of at words. At the end of it. Because <laughs> I, I could get a job doing that. Totally, you could. <laughs> How long's your job? It's a second. This job is a second long. <laughs> yes. So, Alex is here. Hey, guys. Good morning. How good are you? How right. are you, Alex? Good. How are you doing? Pie. Good, mate. Good, good. What have we, what have we got today? Well, so we've, got, we've got two steak and one chicken. Okay, which is which? Is this like a the, roulette the, thing? Or uh, yeah, <laughs> just take your pick, you know. Spin it take your pick. <laughs> no, the, the, the chicken is the one with a little ball on top on that far side. Oh, there. that's chicken. That's okay. steak. Yeah, which yeah, would you prefer? I'll try the steak there because uh, I've the heard steak. that this is... Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, there doesn't seem to be like there's enough pies today, Alex. Are you what? shortchanging us? What? What's going on? How many? Wait, there's three of you guys. Oh, no, there's four. 
we <laughs> actually, I actually, you know what? I'm going to have to bring you guys some back soon uh, <laughs> after this. Yeah, <laughs> I will. Yeah. So, Sorry about that. You see what happens? You know, they, they, it's like the bait and switch. We, we yeah, just show up with the chopping board next time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just yeah. bring us the board. Yeah. And himself. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. So Alex, oh, it's more you. like the steak and switch, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's oh, well, the that's steak good. and switch. That's good for the bump. That's a good one. Yeah. I want a little mini set of drums. I think for that, that would be fun. Um. Wow, Thank you. Hey. I love that. So, it Alec. all happens around here. Alex. Yes. yes. I usually have trouble with the Alec because I have friends called Alec. Oh, and okay. That's hard. All right. I'm, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'll still answer. I'll still Thank answer. You. That's fine. So, uh, if you haven't seen Alex before, <laughs> is the Aussie Project Pie Man, as we like to call him. And I just had a revelation that I've seen you with not many clothes on. <laughs> you, you had, so I was in the show when you were there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So he was in Thunder from Down Under. So that's yeah, how that's, you know Marcus Deacon. That's you that's that's together. how I know Marcus. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. So that's my so well. That's, that's probably my proper job actually. I suppose when it's running. Well, I was just saying. <laughs> um, I was there doing research. <laughs> <laughs> on all the male review shows. Yeah, that's what she's she's telling me that before she was there for research. research. But it's research. A, <laughs> yeah. right. a male, well, they don't call them male review anymore. What do they call them? Oh, I, I don't know. I, male, I, male review is still what I'd call it, or a strip show, whatever. Yeah. Whichever, you know, <laughs> yeah. However frank you want to get. The research we did do, did do, yeah. was that uh, male review shows never close. No, they have amazing for, histories. Never clothes. Never clothes. Never clothes. Never clothes. Never clothes. Yeah. Never clothes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> never clothes. Yeah. <laughs> We're full of them today, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> and uh, unless you're, you know, moving to another hotel, a different contract yeah. or whatever. And so it's a sure bet unless there's a it pandemic is. going on. I know. The, I mean, the people that start the strip shows, they obviously do very well for themselves. There's low overheads. You Low overhead. I think you just I, have to deal with the strip. Clothing budget all. isn't yeah. too bad. <laughs> the, 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 the meet and greet is where it's at. The yeah. Meet and greet, the swag. Oh, at, at our show, you mean? Yeah. Yes, no, yeah, for sure. You know, we do a meet and greet after the show. We hang out with everyone. We're very appreciative of everyone that comes. You know oh, and the mean? girls are too. Oh, and I, the guys. I hope so. I hope we're doing our job all right. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I, and, and like I was saying to you earlier, you guys can actually dance. The Magic Mike guys could actually dance. Oh, they can, uh, yeah. I mean... The How are they going to get the pies into the show when the show comes back? I mean, you've got to have a... Just give me one here, one here, one here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the, what's, that, what's that movie with the whipped cream but the meat pies? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it gives what? a whole whole new meaning to the term "Where's the beef?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Oh, we're full of it today, aren't like we? Warm, like no, I'm, I'm getting inspired pie. by Phil over there. That's yeah, yeah. 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 The pun, the puns witty are and quick. Tonight. He's really, yeah. really, really quick I on the mark. That, yeah. But yeah, so that was my revelation, and I, and I keep saying to him because he mm. looks like Jason Momoa. I wanted to come as Aquaman. One, oh, that's right. Maybe I meant for Valentine's. Oh yeah, went Valentine's in the next month. Yeah, right. No worries. I'll see what I can. I'll see what. How about you just wear your thunder outfit? I was going to say. Uh, my thunder outfit which one <laughs> you want my, my birthday outfit or the costumes what? <laughs> well, one thing that has, <laughs> has definitely changed since the pandemic is that you have to wear a mask and yeah. now you have to wear clothes yeah yeah, I know so, right. we'll be well, excited well, hopefully we're actually going back to work this week so. are you but, really but, we, but as you were saying we, we, the girls have to be 25 feet, uh, feet 25 back, feet back, yeah, back yeah and we have to wear a mask the yeah. whole time we're on stage well you might pass <laughs> out from all yeah. that jigging around that you yeah. do yeah <laughs> well it's, I, I tell you what we went back for two weeks until we got uh, till the pause came back in and they, they put masks on us and oh. before we took the fielders out I was yeah, well, I was starting to get a bit light headed because yeah? running around it's a, it's a fairly active show you know what I mean yeah so, Running around with a mask over your face, it was kind of... You mean you don't just stand there? <laughs> no, no, not all the time. <laughs> it depends how tired I am. <laughs> do, you let the, do you let the girls touch you? Be yeah, prior to no, this. No, normally, If yeah, they've no, got 25 foot long arms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, you've seen those extendable <laughs> arms you can get, they're just like... Yeah. Uh, normally, no, in the show, it's a very interactive show. We go in the audience a lot, we bring girls up on stage. Well, that's right, because yeah. you do all the sitting on the lap thing. Yeah, we do yeah, the sitting on the lap thing. So what's going on? Happen with the beard then when you go back? Does the beard well, stay? I, don't know. I love the beard. I, I, I'll see what the bosses say, I guess. You know <laughs> I, what? Are they gonna have it? I mean, normally you didn't have it when you're in the show. Oh, before, I did, no? I did. It just wasn't as COVID as it is now, it wasn't as long. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Do you put glitter in it for the show? No, I don't start with glitter, but a lot, a lot of the time, I end up with glitter. Still, like, I, I, was, I was still finding glitter in me, like, about a month after the show stopped. I'm like, what? Where the hell is this glitter coming from? From all the, uh, you know, the, the bowls Your character and stuff? just needs to be the pie, man. The pie, yeah. You come on just, with your I pie. I walk out with an apron and that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> you can pay us for that later. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, fantastic. Well, I'm glad because I'm glad I heard you say, you know, with, with when I was in, with Thunder, and I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on? Why do I not know this? This is, this is fine. How long have we known each other now? I know. <laughs> I've, kept, I've kept it a secret. I'm well, slacking. Yeah. I am slacking. I've, I've, kept that, I've kept that secret. That's good. I, I, norm, I normally don't advertise it. To, I used to be pretty proud of it back in the day. I used to be like, yeah, no, I work in... Now I'm like, yeah. Uh, I'm, like, I'm the pie man. <laughs> yeah, I'm the pie man. Yeah, call me the pie man. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just got to make sure you're not eating all the pies. Well, that's right. Otherwise... I, I actually did get a little COVID belly a while ago. So I, <laughs> COVID I mean, belly? I, I haven't heard that yeah. yet. <laughs> well, I mean, I just I just stopped going to the gym and just kept yeah. eating what I wanted. And yeah. then, so I, I, when I went back on stage like a couple of months ago for the two weeks, <laughs> I, I had to, they put me back in the backup. So I was like, oh, <laughs> it's time to get back in the gym. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's all good. It was well, fun. I'm glad you're going back to work. Me, me Which too. Which hotel are you in? Uh, we're in Excalibur. Oh, okay. Yeah, hmm. that's, so. yeah, that's where I saw you. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So we, we've been you. there for about 20 years now. So it's, I mean, it's definitely. You don't go back to Australia very much, do you? Uh, no, we, well, no, I'm still on a visa. So no, yeah. normally I go back once a year to get the visa, mm. to get revisited. But right. uh, this year they actually sent us to Bermuda. For which oh. was because uh, to go back to Australia it was going to be too expensive. I don't know logistics, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. with COVID. Um, but yeah, they, so they sent us to Bermuda for three weeks. So I had to quarantine in Bermuda for two weeks, which mm. just meant I wasn't allowed to go to the consulate for two weeks. Oh. So I just had to chill out in Bermuda for like three oh, weeks. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it, it, it was really bad. I, I just survived, but I'm back now. So. Good. <laughs> I, I worked with one of your country folk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wrote an album with James Blundell. Oh, really? Yeah. When was that? It's about 2000, the year Yeah, 2000. wow. That's amazing. Yeah, we wrote now. Was that over here in Australia? No, or? it was over here. Nice. He came over here for a couple of weeks and we, we sat down, wrote an album, and recorded it, and we had a great time. We're still in touch with, with good friends and stuff. Oh, wow. That's amazing. He's a terrific Very guy. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, lovely. So you can't get away from any Aussies. We're everywhere. No? <laughs> I don't mind so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, very good. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Now, when, when was the album released? I have to have a look at it. Up. It was released uh, just after that. It was uh, called uh, what was it called? Small Super Highway, I think. It was oh, called. okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna and uh, we had a couple go. of songs. We, we actually re he re released re released one of the songs after that. I worked with them, and I worked with. Do you remember Kings of the Sun? Yes, I know the name. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did yeah. their third record as well. Oh, that's so. unreal. That was a great band. They were like a cross between ACDC and yeah. What's that band with Angry Addison? In, in uh, uh, uh Roses. No. Uh, Rose um, Tattoo. Rose Tattoo, yeah. They were like it. a cross between yeah, those yeah, two, yeah. maybe a bit of Billy Idol thrown in. Oh, that's what a great cool. band that was. Yeah, awesome. I'm going to have to look up those two albums yeah. now. That's amazing. It's amazing what you learn on this show. I oh, know, this yeah. show is great. <laughs> <laughs> I love coming here. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're, you, you're going back to the show. And I'm assuming yeah. is, is, there's a restriction on how many people can be in there, yeah? Uh, yeah, so uh, as I said, we went back a couple of months ago. It was at 20, well, it, it was at 50%, but we could only hold 25% just because of spacing. Mm -hmm. was, mm. So now we're going back to like, I don't know, we can only hold like 50 girls a show. That's like a moment. private show. I know, it is pretty. <laughs> I think, well, normally we have like about uh, 10 guys or 11 guys on stage a night. Yes. Um, but I think, I think uh, actually a lot of the guys have gone back to Australia. So I think there's only about eight of us left oh. in really? Vegas, seven of us left in Vegas, including the MC. So. Well, wow. that's a good job because otherwise it would have taken lo uh, less time to introduce the audience to the band. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's, that's right. so true. <laughs> no, I was just saying earlier about some tips that people do to relax. Let's, yeah, let's I heard add that. on the thunder from uh, now. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy this show. I love shower. the music. The, what was that? The what was the position? The yoga position you call it? The plow. The plow. You lay on your back and your legs go over your head and you touch the floor. That's it sounds a plow. like something completely different. Man. It sounds like something from your show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Introducing the plow. <laughs> the pie man and his plow. Oh my god. We you think we're get some mileage yeah, out there. Right? <laughs> well, I'm uh, thrilled that you're uh, that you're going back to work. Me too. It'd be good to have an income again. So. Yeah, that as well. That's yeah. a really good thing. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so where are you off to next? Are you delivering? Yeah, so I'm, I, we've got some. Actually, we've got a, quite a few deliveries today. So, the, and which this show's been absolutely amazing for. I'm glad. You, uh, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah this, this show absolutely. It's it's obviously it's you know it's an expat show. That's the hard, that's the hard thing about the pies in America is I have to educate Americans yeah. what pies are. Right. Yeah. So I mean it's it's happening slowly, but having this ty this type of show where there's the expats that already know what a meat pie is yeah. it's been so good to us so. and I think everyone but finding if you're getting, out if you're getting pies today 
Uh, make sure you count them because he's shortchanging you. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but they might not every, mind because he's from Thunder. With, 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 every, with every joke, there's a smidgen of truth in there. I'm going to bring some back for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not trying to make, I'm not trying to give you a guilt trip or anything. No, no, no. No, no. not. I'm going to have to bring him back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, we, yeah, we had, yeah, anyway, so well, I'm you know, sorry, Ian. You know what, I have a feeling like you're going to get more orders now that everybody knows that you're part of Thunder from Down uh, Under. Yeah, more yeah. or less, it can work either way. Well, so yeah. Everybody else is getting our pies today. Uh, yeah, 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 I'll bring them. So tell everybody before you go, how they how they get hold of you for pies. Um, yeah, so just jump on our uh, on our uh, Instagram, it's the Aussie, or at the Aussie Project, or Facebook, the Aussie Project. You can place an order through there. Our, our work how do you spell Aussie? Uh, A-U-S-S. I made that mistake and I did like Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, that's exactly how I did it. I mean, I should have done that because I mean, a lot of Americans do as well. I look at that and go, Ozzy? Yeah, Ozzy. Ozzy. Maybe something to look at down the path. But yeah, so you just jump on the, on the, this is our, this is our low. This is actually a board that, can we, where are we there? There you go. Ian made that. But Ian made that. That's amazing. That was that really, was really fabulous. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So that's our logo. You jump on there, check it out, and yeah, if you'd like, if you'd like to order some. We're doing free delivery all over oh, Las Vegas. Are you still doing that? Great. We're doing free delivery all over Las Vegas. Wonderful. Yeah. I think Brilliant. I'm going to order some NLA. stuff for a friend who just had to have surgery. Oh, okay. And, the, I mean, the thing is, obviously that person can't cook or whatever, but for the partner, it's difficult. I right. know that from when I had my surgery. Poor Jim mm. was having to do everything. So oh, I'm we? probably going to order some stuff from you for would them you? to I'll make that life would, easier. I'll just let me know. We'll give them to him for free. Would if, you really? Of course. If he's just coming out of surgery, of course. Oh. Oh, they're the loveliest. Free pies. They're the, lo- yeah. they're the loveliest. Today is free pie day. In fact, really. you know who it is, Ian. You know Mike and Melissa. Um, it's yes, Melissa. I do. She just had a very. I don't want to put it out there publicly, but very serious surgery. Yes, I saw Five that. hours long. I saw that one. Um, and yeah, it's it's I, yeah. Is she coming out right? she She's going to be fine. I okay, know she good. is. Yeah. yeah, and and they're super positive people anyway, okay. which is wonderful. But, okay. well, but let, let me know. Oh, and, and thank we'll, you. I'll bring them to your. Take them straight to the hospital. Or whatever you, you like. You know what? Yeah. Can you put your uh, number in my phone? Of course I can. Because hey. we all know why. That is. That, I have to say that's, that's kind slick. of one of the. I was slick <laughs> there. Yeah, a very slick way of. Hey, I need to get your number. Here we go. I've seen it all now. I have a friend that used to (laughs) do that when we used to go shopping, and he literally would walk up to a a gorgeous girl while we were shopping and and not even say a word, just open his phone right there, and they would put their number in. I am not lying, and you know who it is. You know exactly who it is. You know, by the way, I've got this sample on here, which I, I, I sort of know where it's from but I can't remember what it is but I feel like I actually really can't remember what this is Go says on. now but I feel like it might be appropriate but we'll find out Go on. I'm gonna give you a damn good thrashing <laughs> alright <laughs> I'm gonna give you a damn good thrashing so that might be a stretch but you know <laughs> I, now I know what it is I miss I miss that right there. Alex Pyman, love <laughs> yeah. the last name. Yes. Brilliant. There you go. Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you, Alex. As All right, Jack. Uh, no worries, guys. Uh, do you want the chicken pie, Amanda? Uh, Ian, do you want the chicken pie? Yes, gonna, I want I'm the gonna, chicken I, pie. You know, I, I'm going to I'm going to bring back some more pies. I do feel really guilty. Oh. So no. I'm going to. I'm going to uh, Don't I'm gonna, feel guilty, Alex. No, no, I'm going to bring you back some. I feel terrible. Ian, Ian loves right. being in control I, I, I over there. I live right just around the corner as well. So. Oh, right. <laughs> well, we so appreciate it. And I'm no getting worries. hold of you. No and um, that's lovely of you. All right, guys. So thanks. You guys rock. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Of course. Have a fab day. All right, I will. You yeah. too. Show Good meeting you, Alex. Show us your plow. <laughs> yeah. The boy man and his plow. All right. <laughs> All right. See All right. Take care, bye See you later. Bye bye. Fantastic. I love it when Pablo shows up. So, let's get back to our lovely people. Um, if you are new to the show, let us know where you are, whether you're an expat and you moved and where you live now. But also, share the show. There's a, there's a share option. There's also an option for everyone to host a watch party. So if you hit the share button, it'll say host a watch party. You can choose your friends that you want to watch the show with. And that can be ha- that can happen after the show as well, not during the live show. And if you do miss a live show, we always leave the show pinned to the very top of the page. So share, tag your friends, because sharing is what? Caring. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. Uh, <laughs> infectious. Sharing is... <laughs> you have to be very careful. It certainly can be. <laughs> it, it could be. So what I need to do right now is, because mm. we're going to talk a little bit more about what you've been up to, Phil. Uh-huh. Um, I've made a tea that I saw on a little documentary thing. <laughs> we don't know what this tea is. Nobody She's been knows. I've kept it Talking secret. about it. The thing is, last week, yeah. she basically she was doing shots of whiskey on the show, thanks to oh, our... Oh, I our, forgot about that. 
<laughs> yes, you did. So this Smooth. week, who knows what could be in the tea? <laughs> I don't know. I've got my own theories. We thought it might have some kind of illicit substances. <laughs> Mushroom tea <laughs> or something. Philip, I had the best time on that show. It's amazing. Do you know there was a, there was a a a, a uh, an annual event that would take place in Parliament Hill Fields after the first rains of the summer. You'd see tons and tons of people walking around with looked like they had extreme sciatica. Uh, not sciatica. What do, call, <laughs> what do you call that when you have um, scoliosis? Scoliosis. <laughs> They're walking around like this, right. and, and they'd be wandering around picking like psilocybin mushrooms. <gasps> off the Parliament Hill fields and then making tea out of them. No way. Yeah, it probably did still look, goes on. Did they look like zombies then? Not oh, like a bunch of hippies and Just stuff. a bunch of hippies. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you were wandering around with no, sort of... I Believe it, I've not. Or not, I've never done a drug in my life. I've never done a mushroom in Neither my life. Neither have I. I haven't. I've never done anything like that, ever. Honestly, I've never done a Cigarette. Oh, oh, oh! I don't want to upset the queen. <laughs> I think I think that was more so the reaction to what Phil just said. <laughs> I'm just saying. So this tea is called crack tea, not crack tea. Come on, tea. Crack tea. it is like, it's crack tea. It's not Seriously, crack, it's crack tea. It's crack tea. It's crack tea, and its origins lie in South Asia. Its and... origins last in, like lie in, in basements <laughs> in New York somewhere. True, like I can't believe uh, that is truly the name of it, honestly. Wow. So uh, it is uh, through this flavorful and milky tea is part of the Qatari tradition today. It actually comes from India and Pakistan households where this karak is part of their everyday lives and is mostly known as masala chai, roughly translated as tea with spices or karak chai. Now, here's the lovely thing about it. It's not made with, with just milk. It's made with evaporated milk. Oh not just that. It's made with my homemade evaporated milk, which is better than evaporated milk in a tin. Mm. Trust me. I'm actually more concerned about the homemade evaporated milk than I am about the cracked tea. <laughs> so, uh, crack, crack tea. I mean, it sounds like a, a, a daily. Uh, so we did second. We did. We did second mugs in case you didn't like uh, it. Uh, you might need a little bit of. I like a little bit of sugar. Uh, do you want to try some? Give us your <laughs> cup, Will. You know what? Why, it's a while daily tradition um, in Palmdale, isn't it? While we're dishing out the tea, why don't we kind of give ourselves a little moment of uh, respite so that we can assess the tea, report back on it after yes. after our BFF? Let's do it, Ian. All right. Uh, see how I like the way I, I segue there. So this, um, it, and actually, it's a very foody show. It's you got you got your tea, got biscuits. and we've got we've got Phil's uh, COVID kitchen segment yes. coming up. And and Eve actually has done a bit of a, a, a foodie segment as well today. Oh, is she? she does. She I has. Bet it's healthy. Probably. Because it's New Year. I would have thought so. Yeah. So um, here's Eve with her BFF on a food. Good morning. Happy New Year. So I'm sure like most of the world, you've kind of turned over a new leaf, got some New Year's resolutions going, and maybe some of those are to eat a little bit healthier. So I have a few tricks for really trying to make that healthy eating a lot easier and make it more convenient in your life. So let's have a look at kind of some of the things I do in my home. If you're one of those people that goes grocery shopping and sees the latest thing and wants to try something new and it's just grabbing everything without much of a plan, one of the best things you can do is either look up recipes in advance and then create a shopping list or just create your own shopping list based on what you think you're gonna need for the week and then really try and stick to that list. You'll notice when you go to a grocery store, wherever it is in the world, they pretty much all have the same layout. So you go in, you get the fresh produce and then all the fresh stuff tends to be on the outside and then all the crap and the processed and canned stuff down the aisles. So kind of go down the aisles you need to, but avoid kind of going up and down all of them because when you see the chocolate, you're gonna buy the chocolate and it's okay to buy a little bit but it's when it, you start buying it all the time and then it's because it's in the house it gets eaten rather than sticking to your grocery list and then making the recipes and it'll be a lot, lot easier. So let's take a trip to the store. So if bulk cooking sounds like a lot of work, it's, I promise you it's not. You saw all of that meat at the grocery store. I cook it all in tinfoil packages, throw it in the oven for an hour and a quarter, depending how much weight I've got. And then this will last me for about a month. I'll just put them into individual bags and it'll be good to go. I'll just reheat it with some fresh veggies as I go. I also bought loads of turkey. So if you don't like plain foods, 
I'm actually gonna make some like Pierre Chang style turkey lettuce wraps tonight. So all super simple things you can do and then just freeze it down and defrost as you go and you haven't got to keep cooking over and over. You haven't got to think about what you're cooking again. It just makes life so much easier. So another thing you can do is make sure you're not mistaking thirst for hunger. So make sure you're drinking lots of water and even coffee counts. So enjoy. Another tip for trying to stay on track and really helping with healthy living is to always be prepared. So whether that's keeping healthy snacks in the house, you're not just reaching for the chips and the chocolate, and also when you're out and about, like my husband and I are always on the go, and it's really easy when you're starting to get really hungry, it's just to grab the closest thing that's convenient, and it's normally absolute rubbish. So if you're prepared ahead of time, it makes life so much easier. A few of the things we really like, obviously dry fruit and nuts, dead easy, because they're not gonna go off in the heat, they don't need refrigerating. Another thing that's actually really new is legendary foods. Boy, out this is a bit like, do you remember Pop-Tarts? These are tasty pastries, they're under 200 calories. They actually have protein in them. They have less than one gram of sugar. Cinnamon is my favorite. They just came out with a birthday cake flavor. Dead easy. Quest bars come in lots of different flavors, under 200 calories, around 20 grams of protein. It's got a really balanced snack. And then these are my husband's favorite. They're um, peanut butter cookies. I hate peanut butter. I don't know if it's an American thing, but he loves these. So, Make sure you're prepared and one stop up it makes life a lot easier and it makes it a lot easier to stay eating healthily. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next week. First of all, how fabulous does... Oh, <laughs> caught in the act. <laughs> Red-handed. Well, it's healthy stuff. I mean, really. It is, it is. Don't, doesn't even know we get pies every week. No, it's, no, I know. I'm sure she's there quite going, guilty. Naughty, naughty. I'm sure she's saying that. But yeah, I'm First sure of all, doesn't she look great? I love those trousers, by the way. But trousers? It is hard to eat healthy on the run. It's so difficult. So I think they're and great tips. And that's why I don't. <laughs> but I think they're great tips. Really, really great um, tips. By the way, speaking of, uh, speaking of food and all the things um, British, yeah. it is time to make sure we recognise our good friends at the British Corner Shop .co .uk. Yeah. Uh, uh, make sure you go to uh, said website and uh, put in the promo code spill the tea and you'll own the company. Really? No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> I, I never know. You, you, you know, you know oh. what the discounts are. Yes, and I, fifteen I always pounds off your first seventy-five pound order, uh, and they ship worldwide. And they're out of Bristol. Bristol. Uh, but they, I mean, people are literally saying, "I got mine in two days. I got mine in three days." So wow. the stuff's coming really, really early. Got great selection, and they do what they call Brit boxes. Mm -hmm. So we, have, we've had a couple, haven't we, with sweets in, and then you know some oh, yeah. essentials, you know, for gravy and yep, you know yep. that kind of stuff so uh so yeah that's how you use it spill the tea is the code to uh, add into that um what are we doing next hang oh, on i think well i think oh, it would tea. actually be i don't want to i want to save kind of phil's uh COVID kitchen bit for a little bit but um i know that uh we do the, the segment this day in music mm. each week yes. so i think it would actually be a really good idea if our resident rocker yeah there you go. There we go. It's official now. You're the resident rocker. Yeah, he's, he's um, part of our show Took now. us through uh, This Day in Music. So it's over to you, Phil. Okay, so on This Day in Music, with a few interesting um, spins on these things. 1964, the Beatles appeared on um, Sunday night at the London Palladium. Mm. They performed such hits as I Want to Hold Your Hand, This Boy, All My Loving Money, and Twist and Shout. The compare for the evening was... Bruce Forsyth. Oh. Nice to see you. To see, see you. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Didn't they do well? <laughs> when, they, when they appeared, the first at uh, first their fee had been two hundred and fifty pounds. Three months later, their fee was one thousand pounds. <gasps> Good for them! Wow. <laughs> Next up, nineteen sixty nine, Led Zeppelin's debut album was released in the UK, recorded at Olympic Studios in Barnes. I know that the album took thirty six hours of studio time to complete and cost. £1,782. Pounds. <gasps> that was oh, it. So, what would that mean today? Huh? They, uh, they could have hired the Beatles or they decided to probably spend the best £1,782 pounds ever spent in the history of music creating one of the right? most legendary albums. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Right? Oh my Let's gosh. see what else do we have that's interesting. EMI rec Records issued a statement saying it felt unable to promote the Sex Pistols records in view of the adverse publicity generated in the last two months. Uh, uh, 77 Rolling Stone. Keith Richards was fined £750 for possession of cocaine found in his car after the guitarist <laughs> had been involved in a car crash. It's not my car. How is that news? <laughs> that's, not. that's not even news. That's just like what we'd expect. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. What else do we have here? 
Oh, by the way, you, I have to say, because I, I, I looked on it last night, mm. and it was yesterday's date, so it doesn't apply today. But um, I think it was 1967 on this day was Cliff Richard was at number one with The Young Ones. Is it 67? Yeah, it probably would have been around that sort of time, I think. Whoa. Day late and a dollar short, my friend. Well, yep. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Story of my life. <laughs> 77. Uh, this is interesting. The police had their first rehearsal held at drummer Stuart Copeland's fl London flat with Henry Padovani on guitar. And I remember that because I used to go and see the police at the Moonlight Club, which is a railway off of West End Lane, uh, when Henry Padovani was in the band. And then he left and he formed oh, wow. a band called the Flying Padovanis, oh, which wow. didn't quite get as much recognition as the police did. Right. Oh, but, my gosh. Uh, and and the name of the replacement guitarist who ended up being the... Andy Thomas. Yeah. There yeah. That's right. And, and so, uh, but, um, you know, when not I lived there... Not to be there, confused with Gordon Sumner. No, not to be confused, right. exactly. <laughs> which was Sting's Sting. real name. That's right. right. Sting. I'm just showing off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what else do we have here? Uh, Bob Geldof was arrested after a disturbance on a 727 which had been grounded for five hours at Stansted Airport. I don't know, maybe he was on his way to feed the world, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Snoop Dogg was charged in Los Angeles with possession of marijuana and drug paraphernalia and was new. Um, Again, no news we, there. We've got a theme that's, yeah, expected. 2001, British Airways staff complained about Oasis singer Liam Gallagher after he had grabbed a stewardess's bottom, <gasps> refused to stop smoking, and threw objects around the cabin during a flight from London to Rio de Janeiro. And he's no different, because I follow him on Twitter, and he's hilarious. <laughs> what else is there to do on a flight well, to Brazil? it's boring. It's boring otherwise. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> well, you have to. I mean, uh, you know, if we go through, let's see, what else do we have? Do we have time for a few more? Sure, why not? Okay, let's go through a few more. Some of these are good. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in 2003... Morris Gibb from the Bee Gees passed away Bad in the hospital. The Bee Gees. Um, in 2002, was Morris alive, was uh, meaningless songs in very high voices. Yeah. Uh, Morris was made a commander of the British Empire <gasps> along with his brothers. How does that work? So, so do the brothers go and say, I'm brother of commander of the British Empire? Is that B, C, B, E? It could be. Uh, but why did why did or were um, they actually CBEs? Why as did well? only one of them get this? Only one of them got the CBE. I think it's that's that's what I'm I'm that uh, drawing it. attention to is the, the the way this is written. It's sort of somewhat ambiguous. It's, yeah. I don't know if they they all received it or just or he was they were just brothers of the one that received it. Oh, that's weird. interesting. I would be very upset if I wasn't included. Hmm. Right. <laughs> just yeah, you know what? <laughs> hmm. By the way, something to think about. Segway, segway. The music but, industry is. Fun though, isn't it? It by is. By what Phil's been Unlike telling us. Unlike this tea. Oh, you want to do a review of the tea? Well, I, I've just realised I am actually sipping away at it, and I, it's it's. I'm getting a lot of the evaporated milk and uh, yeah notes of notes cherry of and your, wood. And, I don't know. So fancy. No, it's it's. Um, well, well, I'll tell you what. There's no crack in it. No, there's no crack in it. Throw up the picture of my tea cup, the one I sent you. Because that's what it looks like. It's frothy. <laughs> Let's say that with two Fs. Ah. It's a frothy cup coffee. Frothy tea. Frothy tea. Um, and then if you'll show people what the actual tea is. I went into our India British store here in town. And I said, help me. I want to make this crack tea. And you do exactly the tea to pull up. And that's the tea. Cardamom chai tea. Cardamom it's a black tea. tea with real cardamom. But it's the evaporated milk. What real, do you think, tea? What do you think, Phil? Real it's, cardigans. It's interesting. It's in I think it's better with sugar. Real cardigans? Real cardigans, yeah. yeah, with real cardigans in it. So it's a very... It's a little chicken tea cup masala. It is. is it? It's like a curry what? tea. It's like a curry tea. <laughs> it's a curry tea, yeah. But uh, I tea like it with a bit of sugar. I think it brings the flavours out. But uh, to make your evaporated milk, which is so easy, basically bring your full-fat milk to a, a little bit of a boil, not a, big, not a big rolling boil, and then turn it down to simmer. And it's going to take about between 30 and 45 minutes and it starts going dark cream color and thick and there you go that's how it how it's made so nice. now you know about crack very tea. good very good anyone else had crack tea I've got well, a question for you phil yeah what's that from from vicky from a amy vickers she says phil what's your favorite moment being in beggars and thieves and you're amazing oh thank you very <laughs> much amy you are um, amazing favorite moment in beggars and thieves uh I don't know, it was kind of interesting because we were living in New York. So, I mean, it was the whole period was quite quite interesting because yeah. that was the only time I really lived in New York. And so maybe that was my favorite takeaway from the whole thing. 
you know? I mean, they are, they are nuts. I mean, I know, I know the rest of them. <laughs> oh, yes. It's a nutty group. It's a little nutty. It's a nutty group. Not a nutty group. Jim did all the, uh, the uh, sax recordings for, yeah. for, for Ron, uh, Beggar's Thieves. But <laughs> I love Louis's voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just love it. And you know he's a proper pastry chef. Uh, I do know that, yeah. yes, yes. He can cook and bake yes, like you can't believe. Yeah. Uh, let me see if we've got any more questions for you there. Uh, got, uh, um, while you're doing that, I'm going to segue directly straight out of This Day in Music into, uh, you know, we haven't done Check It Out for a little bit, so we'll do Check It Out. I have, a couple, I have a couple more interesting no, things on here, though. On. We moved on from the song. We'll, we'll, we'll create a new Something. thing for that. But, a new thing. Because there's a couple of interesting things I wanted to pull up on This Day in Music. Oh, okay, do I still so have time we're not done yet. We're not done. Yeah. Two things, actually. 1974 Rolls Royce Silver Shadow used by Freddie Mercury until his death in 1991. Sold at auction for 74000 to a Russian businessman. Mm -hmm. 62,000 mile classic Rolls Royce, which had a guide price of only $9,000. £9,000. Featured grey leather, wooden trim, electric windows, automatic gearbox, a car phone, a radio cassette player, Beatles albums, toilet paper and blue jeans. <laughs> <laughs> so that was very interesting. And also we have here something very interesting. It's a little bit... Uh, uh, somber, but not so somber as you would think. Uh, where is he gone now? Uh, I got to find. Here we go. Oh no, it's due to. Oh, I wasn't born on the day uh, American musician, composer, singer, and producer George Duke, who oh! released thir 30 solo albums. <laughs> from he worked with musicians like Frank Zappa and Michael Jackson's Off the Wall album. Unfortunately, he he died. Um, he died in 2013, but he was born. And his um, uh, most famous and most popular album was A Brazilian Love Affair. It's amazing! I want to suggest that this may have been the inspiration for Mr. Gallagher on his flight to Rio de Janeiro <laughs> in grabbing <laughs> the stewardess's bottom. I'm telling you. That album, one of my all-time favorite albums, believe Absolutely. it or not, it's a little obscure that I'm saying this, but amazing. <laughs> that album is so... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to that when I get home. Great. A great musician. Oh, unbelievable. Played a lot with Stanley Clark, who was one of my heroes of bass playing. Oh, really? So, yeah. You know who else I really like is um, Cuba Gooding. Huh? I love Cuba Gooding. Not, not Junior, his dad. I love his music too. Mm. I like, what, you know, whatever mood I'm in, I'll just listen to whatever I want. Do you know what I mean? It's, I, I'm you not, just do whatever you want. I do That's whatever it. I want, period. Yeah. You just live your, li the, the world I do. works on your rules. That's is right. that right, I mean, Sarah? I wear my top backwards. It is backwards, by the way, because I want to wear it backwards <laughs> today. I do. I live my own life. Ah, but I've got to admire that. Gosh, I'm so glad you brought that up, George Duke, because yeah. I haven't listened to him in such a long time. You see? That's it's what good I'm I brought do. that up. That I'm going to listen to that, but yeah, a, a Brazilian love affair is spectacular. You know who else I really love? Elise Regina. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's amazing, amazing. So check a day. <laughs> check a day. <laughs> that was a very smooth segue there, Ian. Well, you know, you got to keep it bouncing along, otherwise it's just going to drift into oblivion, isn't it? it All yeah, right, Captain, it, what are we doing next? It, go on, go aye, on, aye. Captain Kirk. Well, they've, they've got a few today. Um, it's curry chicken day, which which <laughs> goes with the tea. With the curry chicken day. It's curry. It's national curry chicken day. Oh, this is the thing with checker day. You, you got to get here, Phil. Is that some of them are like, oh, that's a natural thing, and some of them are ridiculous. Very For obscure. example, it's feast of fabulous wild men day, what? which you could apply to maybe Alex. Alex, Alex yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it is also international kiss a ginger day. <laughs> kiss a ginger. Kiss it, you know a ginger. We call, yeah, yeah, ginger. Yeah, yeah. It's a ginger day. That's <laughs> have a day for it. Yeah, yeah. Apparently so. That's there's a whole day for it. So um, it's celebrated today. It's National Hot Tea Day. So really, we should adopt this one ourselves. Yeah, Mine's yeah. a little bit lukewarm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually National not Flick a Cardamom Seed Day today. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm telling you, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. <laughs> um, and uh, it's national. See. You say that like that's obscure, yet it is National Marzipan Day. I love marzipan. I like marzipan as well. I've never yeah. made it, though. Have you ever made it before? Though? I have never made marzipan. You usually buy it and then yeah. make things out of it. And eat it as you're using it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't have enough to cover your cake. National ph uh, Pharmacists Day. Pharmacists Day. Uh. Um, National Poetry at Work Day, because that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, of course, it's National Shop for Travel Day, <laughs> which well, everybody's doing right nobody's now. Nobody's going nowhere these days. <laughs> um, stick to your New Year's Resolution Day. See, actually, they're, they're coming up with some, what I expect of them. Yeah. Really. 
And it's Work Harder Day. Oh, no, mm. don't do that. No, no, that's so much. ridiculous. Um, and on this day in history, um, well, we've already said this. Uh, in 1969, Led Zeppelin released their debut album. Yep. Again, on here, too. Amazing band. And... Um, also, in 1908, the first long-distance radio message is broadcast from the Eiffel Tower in Paris in 1908, which I think is, when you look at what we're doing like right here, yeah. and you think in, in 1908, there's 100 and change years ago, yeah. that that was the first radio broadcast. And look what we're doing now. Yeah. We haven't come very far, <laughs> clearly. Where's your Eiffel Tower then? I don't need no Eiffel Tower. It's down on the Strip. It is. It's That's down right. there. It is. We are we are broadcasting from the top of the Eiffel Tower on the Strip of Las Vegas. Just for people who didn't know. Exactly. That's 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 who we are. Um, and um, I think uh, birthdays today. Um, yeah. We have a birthday, well, and it's Amy Vickers' birthday coming up on Sunday. And <laughs> we don't we don't ever do the, the deaths on this day. We leave that one. But it's a bit grim, isn't it? Um, it is. But you know, just just because it's a Vegas thing, Sheldon Adelson died today. Yeah. Or yesterday. <gasps> Did he really? In the last, yes. It was in the news this morning. No way. Yeah. 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 Oh. oh, I wonder if that has something to do with him selling the convention center because he sold all of that stuff. He sold. What you mean? He stuff. died because he sold something? No, no. He sold the stuff prior to. Maybe he was just. You know, well, he was eighty-seven. When they, when they eighty-seven. Around. He had, he had, I think he had lymphoma. But mm. and if you don't know who Sheldon Adelson is, he is, uh, he's, he's, he established the Sands Corporation here in in Las Vegas, and he was, uh, he built the Venetian, which yeah. is one of the the key casinos here. And he was, he was a big, you know, he's one of the richest men in the world, mm -hmm. valued about thirty billion or so, oh, and um, <laughs> friend to various politicians. Wow. So that's that. It's all, oh, it's that. They have that. Hosp they have the Sheldon Al Adelson Hospice. They do. Place, they do don't that. Don't they? But they help a lot of people. Oh, that's they do. Sad. You put us on a down, Ian. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll make a joke about it if you like. No, no don't right. do that. That's fine. <laughs> don't do that. It's too soon. There's nothing sacred with this it's guy. Way too soon. Yeah. No, not really. Not really. But um, oh. so, so that's that. <laughs> yeah. Well. What can you do? So, um, so moving swiftly along. Yes. Um, I know. I see. I already know what you've got coming up because I've actually got the the information right here. But did we want to like? Die? I'm desperate to get into the the COVID kitchen. Yes, let's do the COVID kitchen. I, so uh, I'm I'm not going to tee this up. I think it's it's only a fitting. But all I can say is that you know we like to have a, the occasional little sort of new segment. And um, one thing I do appreciate about what. Phil's offering is, and he's been doing this for a while. In fact, I'm going to ask you, Phil, to tell us a little bit about how we even got to this point. But it's nice and short, so you guys are going to love it. <laughs> I nearly choked. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, Phil, that's a reference to me. Tell us my little... videos are not short. No, not yet, really. But tell us a little bit about <laughs> what the COVID Kitchen is and 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 how it started and and what we're about to see. Uh, COVID Kitchen is something which I love cooking. I love. Uh, I, I, People who know me know that I'm, I'm not bad at cooking and I, I really enjoy it tremendously. I've had a restaurant. I think we talked about that before. Yeah. And I wanted to do something fun when this pandemic started. So I figured I'd do cookery shows. But at, at that time, Instagram would only allow one minute. Mm -hmm. So what I came up with was this concept of the 59-second gourmet <laughs> and the COVID perfect. kitchen. So, so I started doing these little shows and uh, I, they tailed off a little bit. But I'm actually thinking of turning it into something more interesting and yeah. maybe something more permanent. Well, we so found it really interesting. And, and in fact, the great thing is, is you've already got content yeah. backed up. So you, <laughs> you don't actually have to do anything for us. We're just going to run the things that probably a lot of these guys maybe not have seen. And uh, and then we can, um, yeah, we can just benefit and be like, yeah, I did that one. In fact, coming in this morning, he's like, well, what are you doing then? I said, oh, it's it's going to be uh, what it is. But you can tee it up. You can intro, intro yeah. it for us. Okay, here we go. COVID Kitchen, the 59-second gourmet <laughs> And uh, what are we doing this week? Caesar salad. Caesar salad. <laughs> Caesar salad. <laughs> it's just a shot in the dark. Welcome to COVID Kitchen 59 Second Gourmet. As you can see, my COVID beard. We're going to make a Caesar salad. Thing. Check it out. I've got some smashed anchovies here with a little bit of salt. And we're chopping up a little garlic. Now that's getting pulverized. One egg yolk, pinch that, little egg yolk, throw away the membrane. Half a teaspoon of Worcester sauce and half a teaspoon of white wine vinegar. Secret ingredient number one, tiny bit of mayonnaise. Secret ingredient number two, vodka tonic. 
<laughs> and it's all blended, juice of half a lemon. And a quarter cup of olive oil. And there's your dressing. Romaine lettuce. Wash and toss. Add croutons and pepper and parmesan if you like. Wow, insane. Enjoy, be safe, see you soon. You don't waste any time with any of the, 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 the chaff or the, anything. The, yeah, you just get right to the point. The chaff and the fat. It's like which is fast forwarding your video. <laughs> I, I think know. it's great. I'll leave it I to, love it. Leave it to your imagination what kind of video you might be fast forwarding. But <laughs> get to the juicy bits, you know? You know what? I, I think it's way better to make your own Caesar dressing. Oh, yeah. Tell me about the membrane thing. I've never done that before where I've tossed yeah, out Yeah, I was membrane. really intrigued by that. I was yeah. thinking, yeah, I'd never seen that before. And that's, yeah, I had to ask you about that. Well, so you need to use a, an egg yolk, but what you don't want is the membrane with a connecting. I don't want to get into too much of a but, biology, yes. biology lesson. Why not, but, though? Because that stuff is going to end up sort of in there somewhere. And oh. it's just it's just needed to be able to, to drain the uh, yolk out. In fact, you should do that if you're making ice cream as well. Use five egg yolks, four egg yolks. You want to take the membranes off and then use that and discard that. Well, the other thing huh. that we're going to do, and, and Sam, I think you're going to put this into the into the comments. I actually can't do it. It won't we, let me oh, post a you picture. You haven't? It won't well, let me post. I've just put it up on screen here. So that actually is all the, the ingredients that you need for, for Phil's um, Caesar salad. Oh, no, I can do it. I'm sorry. Well, if you can do it. If not, I was going to say you could just pause pause the video at that point. There insanity is in the membrane. You know that, right? Huh? Insane in the yeah. membrane. Insane it's in the, the membrane. The insanity, yes. <laughs> yeah. For sure. <laughs> So, I think that's great. Short and sweet. But yeah. It's nice to make your own dressings. Yeah. And it's a brilliant British take on a it Caesar salad. On a isn't Caesar it? <laughs> isn't it? It's brilliant. Oh, I nearly lost my hat. <laughs> my so, hat, my hat. <laughs> um, so, what, what else? What, well, what do you think we'll do next week? You tell us one you want us to do, and then we'll look it up on your page and basically put it on the show. <laughs> and snag um, it. I'm trying to remember what, what's out there. You've got all kinds of stuff. I scrolled all the way back to the beginning of what the was your favorite? pandemic. What was the other one I that did came like to your mind? I liked your shepherd's pie. Oh, the shepherd's pie one. We could do that. I like the fact that you, fact that you did that with you know what was left over from Christmas dinner roast or yeah. whatever. I thought it was great. Yeah. So next week we it'll be shepherd's, shepherd's pie. pie. All yeah. right. Yeah. Let's do shepherd's pie I think next so. week. Uh, do, do we want to make COVID kitchen? Would you want the COVID bit to be a K? <laughs> Oh, like like <laughs> to go well, with the kitchen or is that too Kardashian? Oh, and I'm thinking as it evolves, you know, <laughs> uh, it may become because we're going to be getting out of that, and it's all it's going to be not the Kobe kitchen. So maybe we'll have to think of a an evolutionary want. kind of. Oh, it's a 59 second gourmet, I suppose. We could I love that. that well, though. I do love yeah. that. We'll find something. I have noticed. Uh, I'm not going to name anybody, but there are certain acquaintances and friends of mine who have seemed to have hijacked <gasps> my idea. Started burning things. Very British, is it? She's with me on that. <laughs> she is with me He's on that. He's got the backing of the Queen. I've, I yeah. have the Queen's backing. <laughs> you do. It's a bit cheeky, isn't it? I'm backing Britain and the Queen's backing me. Yeah. I would never do that. I would never. I would never. <laughs> I would just. I didn't, they didn't plagiarize the name or anything, no, but just the whole concept. Me. You mean other other musicians? Yeah, but other people in. Uh, cheeky beggars. That's what they're called. You're not going to name them, though, are you? No, of course not. Especially, uh, what's his name? Do you're not going to name? <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Him, yeah. <laughs> Forget we that. We always like to try to get some sort of dirt or scoop on the show. I, know. I actually try to create it, but it never really happens. <laughs> I bet you've got a lot It's of... unethical to go out and create dirt that's fictitious on people, just so you can mention it on the... Well, yeah. maybe not, actually. It could be kind of fun. <laughs> it could be fun. Because they can't answer, can they? No, they can't. They've got no defense right. there. <laughs> they can't defend themselves. <laughs> now, what have you been up to recently? Because I know you did a concert. Was it... Yes. Around about Christmas time? We did a showcase concert, a little bit uh, as Alex was um, <laughs> explaining earlier, where we had to have 25 feet between the band and between the audience and a restricted audience. But we really did it as a showcase and to video it because we have a new show starting uh, as soon as things improve in Las Vegas. Brilliant. And it's going to be called Long Live Rock. Oh, I love it. And it's it's very cool. It's all musicians who live here. We're all named people, played with some pretty big bands. Yeah. In fact, do you and want to tell people who have not seen you before who, who you've played for, some of the people? Who I've played for? Yeah, who you're known, known for oh, playing Oh, gosh, with. I've played with, uh, of course, everybody knows Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. And back in the day, I worked with Jimmy Page for a long time. Uh, Vince Neil uh, worked on his Exposed album. Billy Idol. Mm. Uh, a little bit with Edgar Winner, Richie Carts and uh, John Waite. Um, and last in line these days, um, and many other people. Uh, Johnny Halliday, you know the French, the French Elvis. Oh yes, I do know. Worked exactly with Johnny for mean. almost five years. Oh my goodness! What a sweet person that guy was. Uh, you've done a lot. 
Something in your film. I've done a lot oh, of stuff. You'll still do a lot more. <laughs> yeah, I try to. <laughs> try right. to keep busy. So the, so the Paul Shortino is in your, Paul your concert. Paul is. Absolutely. We have Blas Elias from, uh, from Slaughter playing drums. He's another nice. local, local Vega, Vegaite. Vegaite, yeah. Is that what you say? I Vegaite? don't know what we call ourselves. Hey, Sam. It's not a vegan. Put, put the, you know that, that the thing you sent me? I, it didn't get onto the onto the, the schedule. So why don't you put that? You've got that image, right? Yes, I do and have that image. And this is the Long Live Rock one? Yes, that's yeah. the one sheet. Put that in the in the comments so that sure. we can... Yeah, I will. Uh, Let me put you know, the that guys on can, there. can refer to that. Um, and then you, are you going to be doing um, your tour with... It says 2021 here, with Last in Line, um, which ironically is is called The Sickness. Well, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. That's not the tour. The Sickness is very interesting. That's our TV show. Like Much like this show, yeah. we do a show oh. every two or three weeks called The Sickness. We're doing one tomorrow. Nice. Oh, and sweet. it is done at noon Pacific Standard Time. And it's on our Facebook page as well, which is Last in Line Official. And it's called The Sickness because we have a song called The Sickness. And so Got it's, it. it was appropriate. But we do have that design is for a custom, unique if you can call it collector's item t-shirt, oh, which has to be pre-ordered. Nice. And that cuts off on the 15th, which is this Friday. So people have to go and order it. Oh, so we'll get that shared on our page. Yes, uh, please I'll get do. that information from you so we can it's share It's limited that. edition and they are built to order. And we're doing only one run of these uh, sickness shirts. So they're they definitely going to be a cool collector's item. Yeah, I think we'll and that'll only cost you, them. what, two t-shirts for saying all that? That's great. It's a pretty <sighs> good deal, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh, well, um, now, since fine. we've talked a lot about music, Phil. How much do you want for this pie now? <laughs> um, um, what? T shirt. <laughs> I've got a cup of tea and I've got a pie. I know, and this, we've got what some my biscuits. Food These for that, biscuits, then? by the way, are really good. They're actually from IKEA and they're an oatmeal chocolate biscuit. And mm. people go, oh, oatmeal. They're amazing. Oatmeal's good. They're really it's good. all been about food today. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? it? Food and rock it, and roll. It all, yeah, food and music. I mean, <laughs> do you and, really need anything else other than fu- food, and feud? food and music? Oh, I'm talking about food, by the way. Uh, Hadassah Cohen. She Hadassah, says, yeah, She yeah, says yeah. hello. Oh, good it, Lord. She owns Outlaw's Kitchen. Yes. And her food, isn't it good? Oh, my gosh. Yes. Hi, Hadassah. Yeah, and that love. She goes, please tell... not you guys in a while. She goes, please let Phil, you know, tell him I said hello. Talk to music. Yeah. I had the opportunity. I've got a friend who's... Um, it's Debbie Reynolds' son, Todd Fisher. He is building what's probably going to be the best recording studio in town. Really? Yes. And anything from... You know, doing acoustic stuff to orchestra stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll also be able to film all your behind the scenes, 16 cameras. I mean, it's phenomenal. He's, he's got an architecture degree and he's building it from the ground up. He built Debbie Reynolds' uh, theatre mm-hmm. back in the day and all the sound system and everything. And an insane amount of money sunk into it. And he's already got a, they've already got a theatre at the house. Um, so that's a whole other amazing thing. But I got to listen to tracks that have never been put out there publicly from Jimi Hendrix. Wow. And it was the most amazing thing I'd heard in a really long time. Now, when they 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 should be open for business, I think come February. I'm sure they're going to have some kind of a, you know, an invite thing, but I want to make sure that you come along. I would love to. And meet them, the wonderful people. I would and love to. and see what they're putting together. It's mm. Insane, and they are. Is it analog certified by analog certified? I can't remember. Okay, <laughs> but you will know more about it. Well, I, I'm gonna, I want to take you over there so you can see it. Oh, I'd love to go over there. And uh, it was so I, we literally sat in the middle of the theater. I, I mean, that was just the theater sound system, not what's going to be the studio. And it was just what you know, this is amazing, you know, but never been, been uh, put out there. Um, so you track. probably can't even release that stuff because it probably belongs to the estate or something. Yeah, I don't know how he has it. Mm-hmm. Um, they are going to put it out, so I think they rightfully own it somehow. But I'll find out Incredible. and let you know. Yeah, but I, th- I knew you'd be instantly interested in that. And I did say to John, oh, I think Phil Susan will want to come and see this place. I would love to. So as soon as it's ready, um, I mean, and it's purpose built. I mean, it's not trying to make it out of another space or anything like that. So I'm really excited. But so, I saw some of the equipment. I'm sure. So it's great that we've had all these kind of nice sort of almost fan base comments for Phil here. You know, got some good people on here and mm-hmm. got Peter Peter uh, Greco here. He's making a comment, which I'll read in a minute. But just, just to keep you grounded. That's yes. it, that's it. Just to keep you grounded. Don't um, be 30. 
identified. Kathy and Stan Misson said, uh, who is this guy? He looks like a young young Parkinson. Michael Parkinson. Young Parkinson. <laughs> so, I'm supposed to do um, this or something, right? Yeah, I, I don't even know. Yeah, that's right. That's what it was. Um, but, People uh, didn't see that. But, but no, I'm... Sis, I'm this. Yeah. You're supposed there to scratch you. One of those. One ear with one... But no, no. Peter says, uh, Phil, uh, no things went uh, somewhat downhill after Bruce Bird, uh, rest in peace, passed. But um, mm. are you still in contact with most of the guys from the original Vince Neil band lineup? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Vic Fox. I mean, Vic is a tremendous drummer. I love Vic to death. And uh, um, you know, Vince as well. I see Vince from time to time. Uh, but yeah, we stay in touch. We all do. Robbie Crane, of course. Robbie's a, a dear friend. Yeah. You know, so... So That's good. so funny Very that she good. said you look like a young Parkinson. Yeah. I know, right? Well, Takes you're me a back. rock god. Yeah, oh. Is Parkinson a rock god? <laughs> I don't know, but it does take me back. I mean, you know, I do miss things about England. I miss yeah. that. I mean, being... Growing up in Maida Vale, I missed the Church Street Market, which is a which is a very very famous market in London. It was off Edgware Road, right? And it was a, you know people selling you know food food and fruit and vegetables and yeah. stand at the back of a truck and and it was all the things. Yeah. How about this lovely lady over here? I've got <laughs> yeah. all of all of that banter. I mean these these guys were real performance artists. Yes. Yeah, when you think and about that's a, it, that's a, that's a that's gone now, yeah. right? That whole uh, that whole yeah. Uh, yeah. institution for sure. It's fantastic. So Sam. You want to know if I've got anything else yeah, left on my list? Yeah, we've got to that time of the show. I think it's about time to to let people get on with their day. I have one little story that's a lovely story. No one's got anything to do at the moment. We even get on with their day. Yeah, no one's I know we've got nowhere to be and nothing well, to do. <laughs> you know, our, our audience are a very discerning, very business, very, <laughs> you know, they, they can't like sit, sit, sit. They've got to go, go, go. Yeah. But stay, stay, stay right now until we get to the well, end. Well, I think we should finish with this story. It's a great story. It was in the news. Uh, there was a jet ski Romeo that was freed from jail in time for Christmas. Now, Dale McLaughlin, eight, uh, 28 years old, was jailed for riding riding a jet ski from Scotland to see his girlfriend on the Isle of Man. And I saw the photo. It was so funny. He loves her that much. He was on that jet ski. Why would you get arrested for that? Well, he, well because you, he changed zones. Yeah, he you, went from you, Scotland to a different zone. That's right. And there oh, a different tier and all this stuff. On the uh, Lovesick Romeo is what they called him. And uh, he was jailed. And uh, he breached COVID restrictions after oh, making a treacherous 25-mile voyage in a desperate effort to see Jessica Radcliffe at, Radcliffe at 30 years old. Jessica oh, Rabbit? This is, this is, this Jessica Rabbit. Deserves a round of applause, I think. I think it's great. Yeah. Everybody needs a man that will hop on a jet ski and go from Scotland to the Isle of Man. Everybody needs that kind of relationship. That's precious. But, it. but upon, <laughs> <laughs> upon his release, so, so it's a bunch he of flowers said, in. Oh, he said oh, he was in there for four weeks. He was supposed to be in there for four weeks. Come on, in where? In jail for four weeks. Yeah, but he only did half. That's bad enough. Two weeks. Uh, but he was among the passengers who boarded the Ben My Tree. Ben, ben My Tree. <laughs> Sailing to Haitian Lancashire, whatever that means. Did he? Did he go once he was released from prison? How did he get back? I was going to say, him his jet ski he back. Yes, he just back up. Yeah, sail back. He was he was uh, <laughs> photographed at the Island Sea Terminal 8 a.m. Escorted to the departure gate by a member of the prison staff. Basically, had to get back on a, some kind of a boat and get back. When there. you when you when you actually leave the jail and they give you like here's your watch, here's your here's, here's your, your jet, jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to carry it. And he had a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's brilliant. And she did say, his girlfriend, uh, people have said, what he did was heroic. You, you should marry that man. And she said, if he asks me, ask me, I will say yes. It's definitely a story to tell our grandchildren. Yeah. Uh, I think that's... Oh, she's got the whole thing lined up then. You know, if he asks me, it'll be good. Well, yeah, that's blah, the blah, setup, blah, yeah. And, and if he does, it'll yeah. all be in the news. And, you Some know... guy and, standing on the coastline of Scotland <laughs> with a big, loud halo going, Hey! I don't want to know. Hey, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I wonder if they'll get married on jet skis. <laughs> It'd have to feature. It would. I think that's brilliant. I think it's a great note to, to end on today, don't you think? A I nice think so. romantic story. Beautiful. I just love it. I've loved having you here. It's Thank you very brilliant. much. Brilliant. And you've got lots of food to eat now. You've yes. got an interesting breakfast set up for you. You never really said, other than it tasting like curry, what you thought of the tea. Is it? Is it? Is it will you drink another cup or not? Um, <laughs> you can be honest. Um, it's probably not the sort of thing I would <laughs> de- dive into. And you were, no. but no. Uh, it was no, good. I'm, it was I'm good. good. It was. It was. It was def- uh, just a little different, and yeah. I think that it might be an acquired taste. I think so. I love it though. I yeah. actually love it. But thank you for being here. Thank I'm you. So it's been a pleasure. For thank COVID you guys. Kitchen. We appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. And please, uh, everybody, come and see us uh, tomorrow. And. Uh, 
and indulge in a- Andrew Freeman, who's a oh, wonderful singer, and he yeah. also designs a lot of our shirts, and he designed that T-shirt. So a lot of our designs come from Andrew, who's absolutely brilliant at this kind of we stuff. We will so. definitely share all of that information. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. It's been great being here. It's been fun. I've really enjoyed myself. I told Phil it would be fun. Didn't yep. I told you. <laughs> Well, thank you for watching in as usual. Please tell your family and friends about the show. Share it. Tag your friends. Watch it again if you thought it was that amazing. Shout and, out. Yeah, let's do a shout out to ICJ UK because that is a great shirt. What happens in England stays in Vegas. Stays in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> and of course, Ian, you're now the engineer extraordinaire. Um, well, I don't know about that, but, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, look, I'm po- poised with all my buttons right You're here. You're very but, good. But yes, thanks guys for tuning in as always. And, um, you know, make sure you share and like and all that fun stuff. Uh, if you haven't been watching the show before and you're wondering what you've just experienced, <laughs> we can't uh, explain this it. is all the tea live. It is the show for British expats and everybody that loves all things British. We've got a great like core of good people that, that tune in every week and uh, we'd love to add you to it. So please make sure you, you, you tune in again, right? Yes. For sure. Yep. Absolutely. It's all been, right. It's been a fun day. So have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next week. Captain Ian Kirk. <laughs> all Bye, right. everyone. Bye. See you next week, people. A five, six, seven, eight.